garage, garage something like a garage you know what, I, f- garage. what i found there i found a special edition victor times star wars racket oh that's nice that's a collector's item they have a they ha- they have a bunch of uh, different collabs Victor, yeah they do they do with uh they, they, they have one with marvel yeah. right i got something with iron man at one point yeah yeah. They also have some. Um, they they have a collab with Lamborghini, actually. Wow. Yeah. So can you get a Lamborghini with Victor on the side? Of they it? they have this kit with you know I think it's a, a racket and I don't know a, 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 a Lambo, <laughs> no a, a a bag or something like that. I would like to get that. I think uh, I don't know if they. I I talked to them about it once, but they don't have that many yeah. kits left. Yeah, I remember or when I got all that Star Wars stuff. I couldn't really do much with it because they, they didn't have the rights in Europe. They only had it in a few oh. places in Asia, so okay. they couldn't sell it to Europe either or anything. Because a lot of people were asking for it, a lot of <clears throat> Star Wars fans. But now it's Snoopy. It's now a, it's Snoopy. It's a, it's a whole, whole collection with uh, with this uh, peanut thing. I actually, I haven't watched the... Uh, it's a cartoon, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I am also not a huge no. uh, fan of it. A fan, not a fan, or not aware. Uh, I just haven't really read it a lot. So. <laughs> it, it's. I wouldn't it's say a, I'm a huge fan. I it's know a what film, it is. Right? You said read it. No, it's also uh, like comic books. A book. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you can also watch it as a film. It's both, I guess. Yeah, I think it started as like a comic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. It's an old one. <laughs> Well, guys, welcome back to the Bamton Experience. Uh, welcome back to another episode. Um, back in in the couch as usual. Um, first of all, before we get into this episode, thank you so much for the support that we received on the last three episodes. It amazing. Was, yeah, it was uh, quite amazing. Uh, we sh- we shot them out in Indonesia. <laughs> Is that how you say it? Yeah. I think that's correct. Yeah, yeah, we shot them in. We we didn't shoot the guests, <laughs> but we shot the uh, the, the episodes. episodes. Yeah. We shot the episodes out in uh, out in, in Indonesia with uh, Taufik Giliat and uh, Marcus Gideon, and we also had one with uh, with the Bali Boys, Kim Astro and Anna Skov Rasmussen. Uh, great episodes. It was basically the only reason you came to Indonesia. It ended up being yeah. the the only reason why I traveled all the way to to right. Southeast Asia. But that's really it, like it was worth it, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. Which which I don't know if we can say that, but which one was your favorite episode to to shoot? Um, yeah, without like discounting any of the guests, I would still say the one with the uh, Marcus is my favorite. Okay. Like uh, also because I was quite surprised with how fluent he was in English and like how open he was to giving long answers. I also read that from a lot of the fans that usually he's giving quite short answers in interviews, uh, and I didn't have that feeling at all when we talked to him. I also didn't feel like it was an interview that way. It was more just like mm. a, a great conversation actually. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think I prefer that one of the three uh, because Kim and Anas, we already know them very well. So it wasn't interesting for me in the same way as talking to Marcus. He's not a guy that I've been spending a lot of time no, no. with before. So yeah, yeah. The reason why he was really good was that he was, you know, he wasn't approaching his, it like a, like an interview. He was, mm. you know, asking us questions, you questions. Mm. Um, and um and therefore it got it, it was a very very good conversation like that it, it wasn't like an interview so yeah exactly exactly i agree it was a uh, and and yeah it's always one of our concerns when we when we do interviews with players we don't know that well and we don't mm. know if they <laughs> speak uh, english that fluently mm. um but he did and yeah. it was uh, it was awesome a great episode i yeah, also sure. of course as you mentioned we know kim and anas very well um I, I I really enjoyed the one with uh, Taufik as well. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. very different vibe. Yeah. Because it, I mean it was a uh, we shot it a little bit late. Um I don't know if he came straight from dinner or yeah, something. I think he did. Uh, yeah. He he came straight after watching some of the finals, right? And then had dinner. Then had dinner, yes. Yeah. And I just feel like it, it was almost almost 10 in the evening mm. so i think all of us was a little bit tired and a little bit nervous going into we were a little bit nervous yeah, going sure. into the episode but it was just like very laid back yeah. uh, the vibe was just so chill um and when you know when a guy like taufik is talking you just you just listen to everything yeah, yeah. he says uh, and it was he was talking you a little bit slowly 
mm. so you just were like very focused on what he mm. was saying and then i mean yeah yeah, yeah for sure and he's <laughs> also like a very different character compared to to marcus so i think that's also why the, like the vibe and the atmosphere was just very different mm. but even though like marcus is obviously he's also world number one I was a lot more starstruck also with Taufik because like he's a guy that I grew up watching mm. um, so for me it was it was almost a bit surreal actually sitting there in the same room just chatting uh, mm. yeah like we were yeah I wouldn't say best friends but like we'd known each other for for many years it was yeah. it was a fun uh, fun feeling actually R- right away I got a really good and Im- Im- it was my first time talking with Taufik as well mm. uh, and I got a really good impression of him and his manager uh, Ivan right away um, very very kind uh, mm. I met them down in the lobby um, before we went to the room where mm. we recorded the podcast and we sat there had a coffee and just talked for like 15-20 minutes yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want it to I mean to uh, what do you say how do you say it Hur- rush I didn't want it to rush I yeah. mean like Mr. Taufik take your time yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah. we, we had a really good I mean, 15, 20 minutes there talking. I was like, God damn it, we should save all this for the <laughs> podcast. Um, but no, extremely friendly. Um, I think for that sure. the episode actually got a little bit. Uh, it made a, it made a bit of noise out in Indonesia mm. um, because of some of the things Taufik said, and I think it was maybe ma- mainly because of the things he said about uh, Anthony Ginting. Mm. I'm not hundred percent sure, but. I'm, I've been in contact with uh, with uh, his manager Ivan a little bit, mm. and he said that it, it made a bit of noise, mm. but nothing nothing crazy, yeah. nothing. Um, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, he was definitely being uh, like quite honest with yeah. his uh, with his answers, but yeah, I like that, I, and I think that's also not very surprising for anyone that knows Taufik that he is uh, he's definitely uh, quite outspoken, and that's also uh, how he explained it, that he he likes to be able to say what's on his mind mm. and. Uh, I think that also in some ways makes it quite difficult to see him work closely with the PBSI, so the Indonesian Badminton Federation at any point, because being part of the federation like that, you need to sometimes uh, be a bit more political with the uh, things you say in, in public. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I like the, the honor style, I mm. have to say that, and it, it makes yeah. makes it a lot more interesting uh, to watch when you have characters that do that as well. And I was told beforehand uh, when I when I met them down in the lobby that I could ask everything. Yeah. He, he wasn't afraid to 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 answer any questions. Yeah, I, so. I guess we can say without lying that we were both quite shocked by the first story that he told. Like he, he started off just talking about that match fixing. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. Offer yeah. he got, and it was like we were both not no <laughs> we didn't know him that well, and it just started off with well, a bang and talking about. Yeah, yeah. post match fixing. So it was it was a crazy start. Yeah, he went uh, he he went for it. Well, uh, but uh, two great episodes. But now we're back in the back in the in the couch again, back in Copenhagen, where we usually shoot these podcasts. Um, back to doing, I don't know what we can expect. 20,000 k view episodes. Probably not four hundred thousand as we <laughs> had with them, Marcus. <laughs> no. How does it feel to be back here doing these? Uh, Doing these type of episodes. Amazing to be yeah, back here. Now it's actually amazing to be back home. I really enjoy that. Um, I think for me, it wasn't like the trip to Asia was amazing in terms of results, but I think I actually played uh, at a good level. Uh, got one good win, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time there. But I also enjoy uh, my time back home, and yeah, it's just great to be back in this amazing apartment. In this room, this, this room, room is- yeah, this lovely couch, yeah. The white walls, yeah, like it, it has everything. <laughs> yeah, it has everything. I mean, it's it's a shame if you're just listening to this podcast because you really yeah. need the full experience. So go and watch For it sure. on on YouTube sure. if if you are listening on on Spotify. And if anyone like is thinking about like the the studio we've been talking about before, I've got a question about that? Yeah, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> it is like this whole apartment. It's a work in progress. Yeah. Um, I don't think I will ever be done with this apartment before I move out. You know, with yeah. with furn with all the furniture and decoration and stuff. I've lived in my house now for five years, and we still have projects that we wanted to do when we moved in that we haven't done yet. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now we'll we'll get it done. We got a question about the about the studio. Um. I don't know. I don't want to promise anything at this at point. At some point. At some. Hopefully, point. at some point we will. 
I I received a chair yesterday. Hmm? That's um that's meant for for the podcast setup. Was that the one you were collecting just yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I saw um, you walking around with the drill and everything. With the drill? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think yeah. it's a drill. I just, isn't um, yeah. I just attached the legs to the uh, to the chair okay. with the drill. Okay. So we almost need to go film that afterwards so people can see that. So chair. I should redo it or? No, no, no. Just uh, at the end of the podcast, stay tuned. Then you might see that chair. That's a or good idea. Might not. That's a good idea. Yeah. Like, We'll do that in, in the end of this, this episode. I will oh. show you the chair that I just fixed. So handyman, uh, that's what I've been doing here in my uh, in my time off. Yeah, I mean, I've turned. Yeah, into so a, talking about that, like, what, what's a, going on with you? Like, just talk us a, through, not too long, but like quickly. What did okay. go on in that the I'll, Asia I'll, trip for you? I'll try to keep it short. Because you weren't injured when you came there, right? I was. Oh, okay. I, I thought that you were actually okay again when you went there. I re-injured myself. Okay. So, um, yeah, so so obviously there's been a lot of questions about uh, my injury, my situation. I haven't explained the exact injury. I've just been saying that I've been dealing with uh, with something. Um, uh, and I guess I can say it's, it's just like a classic um, muscle strain mm? in the lower abdominal area okay um and i've so that's in the stomach area it's, it's in the yeah. it's in the stomach i've tried that plenty of times where yeah. it's about the the navel yeah but this is just like all the way down okay um w- which is a quite tricky place and um, mm. there are so many things attaching to this area mm. the um yeah, the, the 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 abdominal parts and also I think the what is it called Ad- adductors, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I- I- like inner thighs and stuff. Yeah. All of it connects uh, right here in the bottom of the stomach. Um, yeah, so it's it's just a weird place. Um, so I felt it first on a Tuesday, and we went to Asia on a Friday. We went to Indonesia on a Friday, mm-hmm. and then it actually got better during those uh, four or five days. But then on Sunday, two days before the first tournament, mm. I was in the gym, I had a good session, and then I re-injured myself. Um, one of the exercises um, must have done it. I'm not mm. exactly sure which one. Yeah, and uh, from there on, it was just like trying to recover all the time. It, it went well for three or four days, then I did a little bit too much, uh, back to start again. Mm started over went went well for three or four days did a little bit too much back to to start again mm. so it was a uh, it was very very frustrating uh, i was always aiming for the next tournament yeah, and yeah. okay i'm not going to be ready for this week maybe next week um but in the end we traveled to malaysia uh, mm. and uh, the, the first training session i had there in malaysia on the court it just it just felt very very bad after after the mm. session and it was it was not a tough session at all and um, mm. so there i realized that okay it's it's uh it's it's not possible for me to get ready for mm. any of the tournaments uh and even if i'm going to get uh ready for singapore i mean ready in terms of not having pain anymore mm. i wouldn't have had trained for like five weeks yeah. so it, yeah. it, it it did not uh it didn't make sense to to step on court mm. um so i made the decision. also knowing the draw yeah i was actually <laughs> yeah I, I was going to to play against hans christian in the first round um no so uh so i made the decision together with the with the team but main, mainly i made the decision mm. uh, that i needed to go home and recover mm. and focus on on my yeah, focus recovery. on my recovery uh, and uh, yeah. And so then the big goal ahead, I guess, is the World Championships. That's the next. That's the next uh, tournament that I'm going to play. So obviously, that's that's uh, that's the goal. But of course, extremely extremely frustrating trip. Mm. I went out there with the expectation to play five tournaments mm. in three different countries that I have have been really looking forward to mm. uh, to I mean to to play in again. Um, mm. Yeah, and I went home. Haven't <laughs> and I haven't and I I wasn't even on court one single time, not even in a regular training session. Yeah. 
So yeah, it was a it was a tough one. Yeah, I imagine, was, I imagine. I actually, a... it's not often, but this time I actually felt a little bit sorry for you. Oh, you shouldn't. Like usually, shouldn't. I'm like, yeah, okay, he also deserves it. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I really feel bad for you. Um, <clears throat> also, just like it was such an amazing experience playing in Istora Sinayan again. <laughs> and now I didn't play Malaysia. Uh, yeah. I, I went home after Indonesia, but watching some of the matches uh, on tv and just seeing that like full sellout crowd in and malaysia it, right? in malaysia yeah. yeah amazing atmosphere they even uh, had these uh, like the same kind of uh, celebration as they do in indonesia where they are cheering on the players even in warm-up mm. um yeah so just like it, it's really nice to see yeah. it's like that in malaysia again as well mm. i think that's one of the big stories actually from malaysia open because i played malaysia open quite uh i, I don't know like 10 times perhaps I've heard a lot about the culture in Malaysia, but I've never really seen a, a sellout crowd. I've never really experienced this same kind of atmosphere as in Indonesia, but it, it seems like they've been missing it there and it was it was finally back. So I really hope that I can also come back there one more time and, mm. and try to experience that. Yeah. Because it's an amazing arena, the one in uh, Malaysia. I think it can have like 12,000, 14,000, something like that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's 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 huge. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think there. I mean, Istora is is always like that. It's mm. always crazy. It was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I watched a few matches in the arena and also a bunch of them on television. Mm. It looked awesome, and yeah. it was a uh, very very tough to be out there yeah, yeah. and watching all this and not um, not being on court. Mm. I mean, yeah. obviously, I love the place. I've been doing very well for for the past three years or something. Mm. So yeah, it was a it was a tough one, and Malaysia looked. It, it it looked insane. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I watched really a little bit on on television and, and a little bit on Instagram and stuff. Mm. It looked crazy. Why do you yeah. think that is? I think one of the reasons is probably that it, like Malaysia Open, hasn't been played for a couple of years. So it's been a couple of years since the crowd actually had a chance to watch mm. someone. Um, and I guess they've also had relative success with Lishi Jia and and also uh, the men's doubles. I think uh, with Aaron Chira and. Uh, and uh, so who, who got the middle uh, bronze medal in the olympics so i think maybe like the the mix of a little bit of success and it's been a long time since they had the chance mm -hmm. I, I think that's probably what they did i don't know if they did something about uh, promoting it more or making it cheaper maybe you guys know i don't know uh, but it was just yeah amazing to see and i hope this week uh, where we are recording this one they are playing the malaysia masters mm -hmm. i hope it will be some of the same uh, I also actually read online that they sold a lot of tickets for Singapore Open. Okay. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be like a sellout crowd or anything, but that's also an amazing place to play uh, at a really, really nice stadium. Uh, so I've only been playing in Singapore once. Is it the same yeah. arena as, as usual? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's still called Singapore Indoor Stadium, but that's what it used to be. And okay. it's the one you played in as well. Uh, that's a huge arena. Yeah, it really is. A very windy place. Uh, just like the one in Malaysia, that's also very windy. I think that was clear to see also from all the matches. Um, but yeah, so I need to prepare for that in Singapore, <laughs> that it's going to be a uh, a windy experience on court. But I guess that arena must be even bigger than the one in Malaysia. Don't, mm. don't you think there can be more spectators in there? I'm actually not sure. Okay. Uh, they're both huge, so yeah. yeah. I don't know which one is bigger. I don't know. No. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. It, it will yeah. be. I mean, now they have the 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 reigning world champion Lo Can You. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and he. I think he's gonna go into that tournament as one of the favorites because I, I think a lot of guys are pulling out. You pulled out, mm -hmm. obviously. Victor already pulled out. I saw Lee Shijia pulled out of Malaysia Masters this week. Oh, so really? I don't know if he's not playing. Uh, Singapore and I, I just imagine in general that a lot of players are going to pull out because it's the like the fifth tournament mm. in six weeks a lot of the players also have the Commonwealth Games to look forward to some are already beginning to look forward to the World Championships as well so yeah I yeah. think we will see a lot of uh, withdrawals it's a good one to play for a guy like you that's also this, uh, why I chose it the, part of the reason why I chose it's, it it's a smart, smart decision yeah do you know who you're going to play against now that I have no, no chance to know because I, I know that there's been at least six withdrawals because uh, the young guy, Mas Christofferson from our national team, uh, he was promoted and he was sixth on the reserves list. Um, so at least six guys pulled out and I can play any of those guys. Okay. Uh, and as I said, I think there will be even more withdrawals. So yeah, I'll just have to wait and see. I will know on the Monday before the tournament starts on Tuesday. When do you leave? 
I week? leave on Saturday, uh, and I play my first match on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. The only bad thing <laughs> I have to say about it is the prices. Like, it's the flight crazy. Tickets. It's crazy. Flight tickets and hotels, it's insane. Yeah, these days it's uh, yeah. it's, it's, cool. it's it's quite crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And we often get the question like about how how we uh, if we get it all funded and everything. But I'm paying every single dime for that event myself. I already spend all of my tournament funding from Badminton and Mike yeah. this year, so it's all paid by myself. Yeah. What what how how how's uh, I mean what 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 what's the route? To uh, I'm flying uh, via Dubai. Dubai, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm flying Emirates back and forth. Uh, my trip there is actually okay. On the way home, I have an eight-hour transit in Dubai. Oh. Uh, that's not good. I talked to uh, Mess Chris- Christopherson, as you mm. just mentioned yeah, the yeah, other day. Yeah. Do you know yeah, his about trip. his uh, his trip? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's quite quite insane. I don't even know if we should. Uh, he's should taking tell. the <laughs> bus from Copenhagen to Berlin in Germany, uh, which is like what is it like a ten-hour trip yeah. by bus. And then he's flying from Berlin to uh, to Singapore, uh, simply because the tickets are insanely expensive. So it's, so. it's a ten-hour bus ride yeah, before yeah. you go on a fourteen-hour <laughs> flight. Flight, yeah, uh, on economy. It's, it's <laughs> insane, and even that ticket was still expensive. It was just a lot cheaper than the other expensive ones. So it's, it's insane. Crazy. It's, it's crazy. insane. Yeah. But I'm I'm uh, I really envy you. I would really love to 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 play in Singapore as well. As mentioned, I, I've only been there once. Uh, I did. I mean, I lost in the first round. Not a good experience. But I just remember the stadium and I remember the country. Mm. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, um, amazing country. I would really really amazing really country. love to go back. But next year. Yeah. So you go to Singapore end of this week. Um, oh yeah. And uh, I'll stay back home working on my body and uh, preparing for the world championships but as christian we should uh we should talk about some of the some of the results some of the 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 yes what has been going on i mean i have uh, and this is where you will really shine today because mm. i have been trying to to take some time off mm-hmm. um and i've been watching it all yeah so so like, so, so it's, it's not even a joke i've been watching a lot of badminton actually. okay so so and so obviously we also got a like huge amount of questions about Victor. Obviously, yeah. I think he is probably the main story from uh, from those events. Even though we also have the Chinese mixed doubles of uh, Sheng Siwei and Huang Yekchong, who also won all the events. They're actually, they actually they actually won five events in a row now since the wow. Asian Championship. So they also need to get some recognition. Okay. But I think like in the manner Victor did it, like winning. Indonesia Masters, Indonesia Open, Malaysia Open, and in all three finals, like he just, he almost killed his opponents. Yeah. Like he played, uh, was it Cho Chin Chen in the first one, Indonesia Masters? Yeah. Uh, and then Sao Yun Peng in Indonesia yeah. Open, yeah. and of obviously Momota, who he beat four yeah. and seven in Malaysia Open. That Did was. you watch uh, that final? I watched the final, yeah. I, I didn't watch the semi final with Momota where he beat uh, Kun Lavut, and I was quite surprised that he actually beat him 11 and 12 because I watched Momota play Kalong, mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't feel he was basically playing any better than what we've seen from him lately. I saw him lose to Gemke in Indonesia as well. Mm-hmm. So I was quite surprised that he actually beat Kunlebu. Yeah. Um So I thought in the final, yeah, maybe he's he's getting back to a better level now. And he only played two full matches to make that final because of walkovers. Um, so he went into that match being fresh and Victor had played a tough match against Christy the day before. Um, but it was quite quickly very clear that he had absolutely no chance and he he has nothing in his game right now that can trouble Victor because uh, Victor when he has the confidence he has right now if you cannot make winners if you can't score your own points he will just feel so confident and so safe on court that he will just like he will just toy with you and he, mm. he honestly he just toyed with Momota okay. even from the difficult side of the court in the in the second game he had no issues at all. Played faster, uh, hit, just killed the shuttle at ease. Even in the second game, and yeah, Momota basically did not hit any winners. It was, it was unbelievable to see. And I, I have to say, also in some ways, actually a little bit sad uh, mm. when when you've watched this guy play some insane badminton yeah. so many times, and we've seen amazing matches between those two as well. It was. Uh, 
yeah, it was a little bit sad actually to mm. see the condition of uh, of Momota in that match. I wonder, I wonder what it is. I mean, because obviously he has been through a lot. I mean, mm. with with the car, uh, with the car accident. Um, but since the car accident, he he got back to a quite good level. Mm. I mean, mm. he 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 was that close of of beating Victor in the in the Denmark Open final. Mm. Um, he won one of the tournaments on Bali, yeah. so he has been he has been back to a high level. Um, For sure. I played him in, on Bali in 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 one of the finals mm. in the final, mm. um, and he played very very good. I had no mm. chance at all. Mm. Um, so it's like you you almost want to blame the the, the car accident, but mm. I don't know if that's if that's that. Mm. Um, it's it's kind of weird. Mm. Um, we actually got a question about that, which I thought was uh, a quite good one, because he he made a uh, an interview with BWF in Malaysia. Okay. Where he said, that, and a fan asked us about our thoughts on that. He said, "Momota, and this is a quote. I feel like about the uh, like about the accident and everything, how it affected him. Okay. He, he said, I'm quoting, I feel like I lost everything. I'm back to zero. What I built is all gone." And even though I love badminton, I almost starting to dislike it. Now I'm in the final here, and it's good for me. And I think I might be getting closer to the answer I'm looking for. I think I might be going up one level. And was I, it after the final? That was before the final. Before so the that final. was after beating uh, Kunlevut. Yeah. And I, I thought it was very interesting because to me that shows that it's it's a lot of uh, mental question for him mm. that he's he's just basically lost some of the the. The eager to play badminton and the the love for playing the game yeah. and he he's trying to yeah find his way back into the uh yeah. i would say that, like the rhythm he had before because you felt like he could just go on court and be instantly uh yeah playing amazing badminton and it, it's like he needs to yeah start it all over get back into that rhythm and he, he cannot seem to kind of build up that same kind of rhythm for for the game uh, no. as easy as he did before yeah. And I mean, who who knows? Um, I mean, I I have never been in a, in a crazy situation like that. Where I mean, I mean, the um, the guy driving the car died yeah, right there, yeah, right? I yeah. mean, so it's, it's absolutely crazy. crazy. Um, so who knows what that's what that does to a mm. human? I mean, it really puts life into perspective, I assume. Um, For sure. And at that point, he had won so much. Mm. I mean, he was at, at he he was where Victor is at right now. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he was that dominant. Yeah, do- I think dominant. Didn't he win like 11 uh, wins in uh, in 2019? I think something like that, 11 or 12, Probably. which is something that Victor is on uh, on course of doing right mm. now. Yeah. So it is, it is, it is very, very sad to see, and I was very, very happy to see him at Denmark Open uh, mm. playing that well again. Um, and there were a point in that match where you felt like it's, mm. it's back to, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. back to, I mean, as it used to be. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, he's he's struggling once again. I yeah. mean, I I totally get it if he's having a hard time finding the same eager mm. and drive and motivation because he's already been so successful, mm. and. Yeah. And then he has experienced something that crazy. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, who can blame him for maybe lacking a bit mm. of, of motivation? But I was also surprised with with I mean with the final, having in mind that he actually won the the semi final with um eleven and something. eleven and twelve against yeah. Kunlewood, yeah. And uh, and I see Kunlewood as a very very strong player, yeah, so definitely. So I, definitely. I feel that was a yeah. great win. So. Mm. I mean four and seven. Yeah. Having in mind that one of the sides is yeah a lot difficult, a lot, yeah, very yeah, a lot difficult. more difficult. Uh, yeah, there was, was a lot of free game matches, right? Yeah, there was a strong uh, yeah. drift to one side, also a bit sideways, but mostly like yeah. uh, for and against. Um, yeah. But I, I think that final also says a bit about like where Victor is right now in terms of uh, like his mental toughness mm. like it's the third third week in a row where he's in the final and he's not letting go yeah. at like just for 10 seconds basically I think the only time I've seen him uh, in these three weeks uh, kind of uh, let the foot off the pedal a little bit was in that final like uh, not the final semi-final against Lisi Jia in uh, Indonesia where he's up 2016 in the third game and then he loses five points like this 
But did you see? I saw yeah. those five yeah. times. Yeah, and I was just about to say that the Lisi Ja also played at an insane level in those yeah, five did. points. Really uh, but I just felt like also when you saw from the reaction from Victor mm-hmm. and like how fast it went, like it, it did not take more mm-hmm. than like, what did it take? One minute, yeah, one and a half minute? Some, something like that. Uh, like if he had been completely focused at that point, I think he would have been able to either stop it or at least stall it uh, for a little bit. But then again, he came back, he survived the match point and actually mm, yeah. finished off the job. Uh, yeah. But it was it was it was a crazy match. Yeah, it was it was I, I watched amazing the, match. The majority of yeah. that one. Yeah. It was uh, that was insane. Yeah. Um I think also like a lot of questions have been about like who we see as the most uh realistic player to actually beat Victor. And I think right now, for me there's no doubt that it would be Lee Sikia. Because he's a guy he has the weapons to actually score some points and make Victor a little bit insecure. Uh and I think without that you have no chance and he's the one that has the best attack. Um uh, yeah, to, to yeah, give him sure. some trouble. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. Um, I mean, who 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 has been able to defeat Victor? I mean, you are low. Can low, you low did, did it, it at, at the, the World, World Championships. Championships? Hanoi did it on Bali. Yeah, and Laksha, Laksha did, did it in German, German Open. Yeah. And then the last two matches he lost was uh, yeah, Walkover matches. Mm. Uh, he pulled yeah. out of the second round in Thailand and uh, somewhere else. I'm forgetting now. Yeah, but but the majority of the questions is yeah who who is able to beat Victor mm. or what is it that yeah. makes him so good? Yeah, yeah. Um, I ag- I agree. Uh, Lisi Jia is probably the guy with the with the highest level at the moment on his best days. Mm. Um, and he can score his point and he can mm. do crazy stuff like mm. he did in those five points from mm. yeah from sixteen twenty to twenty one twenty. Yeah. Um, but what is it that makes Victor so so great at the moment? First of all, obviously his size and his physique and is 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 crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, and with with that physique, I mean, with that with that size, and he's a tall guy and a big guy, you would you would I mean you you wouldn't expect him to move so well, mm. be so agile, um, and still so explosive, so durable. I mean, basically everything when it comes. Yeah. Every every aspect that um like his athleticism in yeah, general. Yeah. Yeah. Just his his physique in general is yeah. is crazy. Yeah. And and this is this is definitely something that he has always got. I mean, he has been working extremely hard to to get to that point. Mm, yeah. Um I think if you saw him back in the days uh, playing Qinglong and and Momota and mm-hmm. Li, Li Chengwei and guy these guys you could see that at some point he all also started to 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 lag a little mm. bit. You know, his movement wasn't as fluent. Mm. Uh, maybe he against Momota as well in the past. Yeah. Yeah, against Momota, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he fell a little bit in his lunches. You mm. know, losing mm. the the control of the core and stuff. Mm. But now he's just rock solid mm. in every movement. Um, explosive throughout the whole matches and stuff mm. so so that that's that's one thing that's his physique mm. but i think his his uh, ability to not give anything easy to the mm. opponent is a uh, is a is i mean it's insane yeah. and i think you you saw the same in momota at his best mm. you saw the same uh, in chenglong at his best you know the ability to not make any stupid decisions or mm. mistakes during the match mm. so the opponent knows that this is going to be absolutely, yeah. uh, I mean, extremely difficult to make all the points that I need in order to win mm. this match. Yeah. Um, I think that that that's the one that really separates um, him from from the rest, and what separated Momota from the rest rest mm. back in the day, mm. and Qinglong as well. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. Lin Wei and Dan if there was. Uh, I think a little bit different. I think uh, Lin Dan in some way. Uh, sometimes was kind of the same. I think Chong Wei, in many ways, were he was different because uh, it was more. He was playing around a little bit more, like yeah. Wasn't he? And I think, in compared to Lin Dan, I would also be a little bit more afraid about his speed and his attack. Actually, uh, like. Uh, like you would it, fear not, Li Chong Wei a bit yeah, more than Lin Dan. Yeah, I would. It, like Lin Dan, I would more be thinking like you just described that. Okay, I know, I need to play at a crazy level and to to be able to score my points. Mm. I cannot make. Uh, I, I won't get anything easy. Where against Chong Wei, 
I would still feel like, okay, every now and then he will give me some points, but the problem is more that I, I won't be able to like withstand from like his ins insane pressure all the time. Like he will just keep blitzing me and mm. attacking and uh, yeah, play at a much faster pace. So yeah. I think they were a little bit different uh, that way. Uh, and I think that's also in like sometimes actually was part of the reason why he came up a little bit short against Lindan in the big matches because he would make that mistake before Lindan would like he would be a little bit more consistent. Mm. Obviously, there's more to it than that, but I think that's part of uh, part of the explanation. But yeah, I completely agree. Like, like you can you can almost see it in people when they play Victor now that when you go on court, it's not that they look beaten, but you can just see it in their eyes that they know this is gonna be insanely tough mm. and. That way you're already behind on points from from yeah. the the yeah the start, yeah. and again with the like insane hunger he's showing for for yeah. winning at <laughs> the moment it's just uh, yeah. it's almost difficult to see him lose. Uh, well, one thing I'm wondering is like how important that Olympic gold medal was. Like, has that made it easier for him to kind of um, uh, just relax on court and and not be so tense, but where he differs from all the other Olympic winners is that like he's winning everything afterwards. A lot of the other players are actually not performing so well. So you can also get that like kind of drop in performance because you reached a big goal and then you don't know how to find the same motivation again. But he's been the, like the complete opposite. Mm. Just yeah, his uh, his hunger is uh, <laughs> is crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I was actually a little it's bit su surprised to see that he withdrew from the from the last two tournaments mm, because yeah. I was thinking like. Maybe he just wants to see how crazy can yeah. uh, can this get. Yeah. I mean, how long of a streak can I go on? I, I read um, a crazy statistics about his uh, ranking. Obviously, our ranking system is broken at the moment because of uh, like the frozen ranking. Mm. Like I'm number three. That's that's, that's crazy. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but yeah, before he won Malaysia Open, uh, I saw that even if he won that, he would not get any more points on the rankings mm. it's a 750 okay the only way he could get any more points on his current ranking is by winning the world championships and that way he would score a thousand points okay and even if he won another super 1000 he won't get any more points because <laughs> he already has i think he has eight super 1000 wins and then he has uh the olympics and a team result from the Thomas mm. uh, Thomas Cup. Okay. So that's his ten counting results. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's just insane. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. The ranking will be fixed though from from August. From August, they will start removing some of the old uh, results, and from January, we will be back to normal. And then, obviously, he will have the possibility to improve his points by a little bit more. But yeah. I'm guessing at that point, he might be uh, at a point where he has like maybe even ten tournament wins counting for him. Yeah. That would be it's, insane. That that's insane, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, we, we we could mention I think almost everything about him that's uh, that's absolutely world class mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm. and that's what's what what makes him different from everyone else is mm -hmm. that Lizzie Jia is an incredible Bamsun player, mm -hmm. um, but he is not that consistent yeah. as Victor is. Yeah. Um, so I mean. There are so many very very good players who is mm. uh, world class in so many aspects of the game, mm. but not in all of them. And yeah. he is in all of them. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, he's he's uh, really on a crazy streak. Yeah. And I think I th also think we got a question about where 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 does he rank? I mean, with mm. with with the greatest of all time. Mm. I I don't know about the exact number of how many. Uh, Tournament Lee Chung Wei won back mm. when it was a super serious. Um, but I think Victor has surpassed Lee Chung Wei. I mean, with an Olympic goal okay. and a world championship goal. I mean, yeah, that's a bold <laughs> statement. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I, I mean, yeah. it, de it depends it, on, I mean, what about Thomas Cup? Lee yeah. Chung Wei did, did, he didn't win that either. Thomas it's Cup goal, World Championship goal, Olympic gold. That's yeah. three of the, if not the three biggest titles that yeah. you can win. Yeah. Um, and I think they have the equal amount of All England titles. I think Chong Wei won twice, and I think Victor also has two now. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it it depends on how high you. Yeah, but you can def definitely make a case for saying that Victor is uh, is bigger now. Uh, I think that will if upset you had to, quite if, a few people. But <clears throat> I mean, I, I I I don't I don't want to, 
I mean, go with one or the other just because I like one or the other. It's, mm. it's, it's just I'm trying to be objective. Yeah, yeah. Can you say that? <laughs> I can, but it is like a subjective discussion because there's yeah. like there's no, no, yeah, course, no way to say is, is. what is better than the other. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really thought about if it, I think it depends he's... on how high you rank the amount of yeah, titles yeah, yeah, yeah. or like the biggest titles. And also the longevity. Like Chung Wei, he's been on the top and being been world number one for so long and been in the top three and yeah, four sure. for, for so long. Victor is still in terms of that quite or relatively young. Um so it will be easier to pass the judgment. Uh, in of a course. couple of years time but, uh, but he's 28 think, though yeah, so yeah I think you can definitely make the case that he is uh, he's he maybe has surpassed him That that's crazy to, it, to it, say it, actually if, it's it, crazy if you if you had to choose Lee Chung Wei's career yeah but that's or Victor's the, career no doubt I would choose Victor's no doubt <laughs> okay no doubt I don't uh, know I mean what do you think uh, guys help us uh, out here it's, it's uh, not that I wouldn't want to have Chung Wei's career I would love that but uh, I would I would swap you can't instantly. really compete with for me you can't compete with that Olympic gold I would uh, I would take that any day no yeah I think Lee Chung Wei would too I think yeah. he would swap with Victor as well yeah Yeah, for 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 those. We need to get him on the podcast and then yeah, ask him. Maybe yeah. that's a bit disrespectful, actually. I don't Af- know. After <laughs> we, I mean, we love Lee Chung Wei here on the podcast. Yeah, for sure. Let, let's let's make that clear right now. I he mean, is one of the biggest yeah, of all time, no obvious, doubt about obviously that. Obviously, he is. I mean, for me, Lin Dan is the biggest. Same for me. After that, um, it's it's either Victor or Lee Chung Wei. Um, mm. I think you you can you can make the argument that Victor has surpassed yeah. him because of the. But it's fun, like when you mention those titles, then why when you mention Chen Long compared to to Chong Wei? Chen Long has uh, Olympic gold. He has World Championship gold. How many? World huh? Championships? Yeah. Didn't he win twice? I think he won twice. He won in uh, in Denmark in 2014. And in Indonesia. In Indonesia in 2015. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he has two two golds, um, and he also has Thomas Cup. Obviously, he I also mean, he, has he, yeah. All England. Yeah, yeah. He's but, very, but I think he's very very underrated yeah, because of Lindan. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think we spoke about it before. Like it, it's he is the most underrated. Uh, I love Ching. guy who can actually. <laughs> yeah, he actually deserves to yeah. be in that discussion of really being uh, the greatest yeah. of all time. Right. I, I don't think he can match to Lindan. Uh, but like in terms of uh, the results, it's it's crazy. We don't think of him straight away. Uh, the I, same I, way I did we do though. I was about yeah, I was yeah, about yeah. to to mention him. Yeah. Um. But it, it's 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 hundred percent right. I mean, he has all those titles that mm. Victor has as yeah, well. Yeah. And I think it also has something to do with nationality because he's also Chinese, like Lin Dan. So he is a little bit in the shadow of Lin Dan. Like, had he been from India or. Uh, mm. Yeah, anywhere else where they didn't have one star who was actually bigger, then I'm sure that the like the tale about Chen Long would also be also be bigger. I agree. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, do you, do you know how many tournaments he has won on the highest level? Chen Long. Yeah, compared to Victor yeah. and uh, Momota and. I don't know precisely. I just know he won more than 20 of those big titles. I don't. I don't. I don't think Victor is uh, actually. I don't think he's close to 20 yet. I think he's like, uh, yeah, just below below 15. And he like has that. also won all England at least once. Yeah, at least once. The, the, the crazy stat again about Victor is that like this Malaysia Open was actually the first time he won a 750. Wow, he he won. I think it's eight one thousand titles over the past uh, three years, but he never won a seven hundred and fifty until this Malaysia Open. That's crazy. Yeah. And we also forget. I mean, we forget about Momota a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he has two World Championship titles. Yeah, and almost couldn't be beaten for a couple of years. Won eleven events in twenty nineteen. Also, so many, uh, so yeah. many events yeah. won and. Um, But no Olympic Thomas medal. Cup, Thomas, Thomas Cup as well. Yeah. All England twice. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure, but he did win All England. But he has no Olympic medal. I think that's no. what uh, holds him that's back the, a little I bit. I mean, but but if he had an Olympic medal, he mm. would be equal with Victor, or maybe above with two World Championship titles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's a tough discussion. I don't know. It's yeah. it's a very tough one. Um, yeah, but, but it would uh, be interesting to hear what the guys uh, think. Yeah. Give us your top five guys. Yeah. All time. I mean And obviously then Dan is number one, but 
Yeah. <laughs> Give us a rest. <laughs> Two to five. Um, but I mean, if we go further back, but that's that's before me. I don't know about before Linda, mm. um, before Taufik and Peter Gade and yeah, yeah. I I feel like you often hear about some 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 old stories about some mm. some players who won absolutely everything. I think, yeah, I think it's it's really difficult to compare the time before uh, it became an Olympic sport in '96 because mm. like you, you can't really compare that Olympic gold to anything won in the past. So there's like the period from '96 until now, and then I think there's the period from '77 where the World Championship started until 96 that's kind of its own period and then before 77 the uh, the world championships didn't exist so you said that all england was the like the unofficial world championships but so obviously an all england title back in those days counts for more than it does now uh, so that's why it's like it's it's really difficult to compare that way mm. uh, across generations yeah and uh, so i think since 96 there's no doubt that the guys we just mentioned are should be the biggest uh, legends of the game yeah in men's singles at least I mean definitely definitely better I mean if you put them up against each other in a match I mean it would be yeah, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't even be a match but uh, I think if you find someone <laughs> in 15 years who's the best then they will probably also be better than Victor is now I think it's it, interesting it's I very, think it's, it's very don't you think it's always like that that the yeah, game I mean, is evolving all the time yeah of course you play actually, faster and faster I had and, the, the yeah. uh, I mean I was talking with one of my friends the other day and and he said something like, "It would be interesting in fifty years mm. if they were like looking at Victor, looking at at us, the best players in the world at at this time, mm. saying they were absolute, <laughs> <laughs> absolute trash." I yeah. mean, Im- imagine, yeah. imagine, imagine that if someone looked at Victor and said that he's yeah. a novice or something, yeah. that would be insane. Yeah. We'll see. So that's uh, that was a lot about uh, Victor and men single. Um, what else has been going on? Interesting stuff. Yeah, I think apart from that mixed doubles that I mentioned, uh, the Chinese uh, ones where we really need to uh, acknowledge uh, that feat winning uh, five events in a row, that is that is insane. And uh, they look like someone who can just keep going. Um, I think they, uh, they are out to prove a point after not winning the Olympics, which was uh, mm. yeah quite the, uh, the big, big disappointment for them. I think... The one, uh, I, I actually say two results that I, I took most notice of in these weeks was uh, Rachanak winning uh, Malaysia Open um, because I think it's been a while since we've seen him, seen her at, at that level. Uh, obviously, she's still a top 10 player and she can still beat the good players on her days. But I just felt like it was, uh, it's been a while since we actually seen her compete to to win the biggest titles i might she, be completely she, off here but that that's she did well feeling. in indonesia as well yeah i think she? she was in the semi-final yeah uh, yeah who did she like beat in, in in malaysia in the semi-final final uh, in the final she beat uh, chen yufei uh in three games um did she beat tai su ying in the semi-final no that was chen yufei who did that i don't remember who she beat in the okay. semi-final but she beat chen yufei in the final which was uh amazing she played like almost full out attack in the in the final game that Rachanak? was yeah Rachanak, yeah uh, and yeah she's one of the lady singles i always uh, enjoyed most to watch yeah tai su ying is number one for me but i think Rachanak, uh, yeah. like just looking at her play it's uh it's beautiful she she has a nice technique and a nice movement mm. yeah tai su ying has a little bit little bit more skilled mm. uh yeah i mean in in her game yeah. but also very lovely movement mm. and um Rachanak is for sure more powerful uh she's very of, fluent i mean mm. the way she she moves and her yeah. technique yeah. do you know her age what is uh, she Rachanak? yeah she's something like 28 or something like that yeah maybe younger we can quickly look it up <laughs> i'm uh, quite sure that the first time I heard Rachanak. about uh, Rachanak Insanon from Thailand was when she won the World Cham- World Junior Championships. Yeah. And I, um, if I'm not mistaken, she was like 15 years old or something, maybe 14. The World Junior, yeah. Yeah. She won it. Did she win it three times in a row? Uh, she. I uh, anyway, she's 27 maybe. now. She's born in 95. Okay. February 95. Okay. Uh, she's the youngest ever singles world champion. Okay. Senior. She won that at age 18. For uh, senior? For seniors, yeah. Wow. In 2013 in Guangzhou. Uh, yeah, Crazy. in China. One of those 18 year olds. 
it's crazy so yeah she's a legend of the game as well it's it's fun actually she's only 27 i feel like yeah. she's one of the older women singles but i am I, yeah, I mean obviously we focus a lot of uh, on men single mm. and and we talk about you know greatest of all time and mm. but there are so many in the other categories that we i mean underestimate a little bit mm. how crazy of a of a career they mm-hmm. already have at a yeah. At a very young age, I mean, Sheng Shui, mm. he's my age. I mean, he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. 25 or something. <laughs> yeah. Yuta Watanabe, he's my age, yeah. 25. Um, Kevin is is not old at all. No, no, I mean, there yeah. there's there's so many players that just because they have been on the biggest stage for <laughs> yeah. plus five years, we 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 look at them uh, like older but they are very very young i mean many of them still have like yeah. five ten years left if yeah. they want to i mean yeah, yeah it's crazy I'm it's just uh i'm just laughing because i'm looking at shang Wei's results and it's just it's absolutely uh, unreal yeah and he's, world, he's 25 he's 25 yeah two yeah. world championships he won the thomas cup he won the asian games he won the asian championships he won the the world junior championships obviously as well a couple of times uh yeah the silver at the olympics and just again, a bunch of titles yeah and he's been world number one with uh two different partners as well so it's <laughs> quite impressive <laughs> quite impressive that, that's a crazy accomplishment yeah. two yeah. different partners yeah. but yeah the the <laughs> other I, I mentioned i had two other results or uh, yeah things i noticed uh and that was actually <laughs> this is quite rare uh but in in women's dolls um because Obviously in Indonesia, uh, it was the retirement party as well for uh, Grisha Polly, who we had on the shout out. On, yeah, shout we had her on the Grisha. podcast. We love you, Grisha. Um, but her partner, uh, Apriyani Rahayo, she uh, started playing with a new partner, mm. uh, Ramadani, uh, or Ramadanti, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and they made a quarterfinal, but then they made a final in Indonesia. Uh, in one of the tournaments in Indonesia and one Malaysia Open. Yeah. Uh, and I had never heard of her new partner before. And they beat one, some of the best pairs uh, on the road to both the final and the, the winning that tournament in Malaysia. Um, Good way to start uh, start out with a new partnership. Yeah. And nothing uh, bad about Grecia, but like watching this girl play with Ohio, I think that was actually even more fun than watching uh, um, Grecia play with uh, okay. Apriani. Because this girl, she she's... She has a bit of a similar style to Apriani, I think. So she's she's very yeah very entertaining, and it's uh, it's two girls with a lot of energy on court and a lot of uh, charisma. Uh, Grace also had that, but she was for me uh, yeah a diff- different kind of uh, player. So I, I'm really I'm excited to to see those two uh, see those two th- for the future. And I also love the way they handle themselves in these two tournaments i saw an interview uh, with uh, rahayu after they won i think it was a quarterfinal or semifinal in malaysia and it was already a big result for them at that time but she was just fully focused on the fact that they were not there to make the final they were there to win and it was only the third event together for them mm. all the best pairs pairs are there and she's playing with a completely new partner and she was just focused on winning it didn't matter if they made the final that was not enough and then they just went on and actually also won that final yeah. so yeah I, I really uh I, i'm really expecting big things from uh, from those two she will win back-to-back uh, gold medals at uh, the olympics that will be crazy then she will maybe be the goat of uh, women's doubles women's doubles yeah I'm not really strong in in women's doubles when no, it comes to to neither. statistics and <laughs> stuff. <laughs> me neither. <clears throat> Maybe we should uh, we should start uh, focusing a bit more on, on women's doubles. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe. those two Maybe. can get Maybe us uh, to do that. Huh? Maybe those two, the two Indonesian girls, oh, can yeah. uh, make us do that. Yeah. Yeah. I was following a little bit more when the when the Danish women's doubles, uh, Christina and Camilla, mm. was was playing. Yeah. But, uh, they retired a few years they retired ago. yeah yeah they retired and they yeah. also can't really compare to those other girls but they were they, they were very successful though for sure, i mean for sure for, one of them for, for danish standards uh, I, especially i think for danish standards there might be at least since badminton became an olympic sport i think they are the most successful uh, women's double for sure yeah are you going to play all the way to another Malaysia Open. You just said that that hopefully you would go back. Yeah, hopefully, but it's like like with every tournament I play from now on, it's a little bit difficult to say if it's the last time I'm there because 
I don't know when exactly I will retire next year. Do you cry and when you when you leave a place? I mean, I cry because I'm so happy I'm going home to see my family. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. I know I don't. Uh, I actually I don't think too much about it when I'm there. Um, I I only try to think about it in the way that I try to tell myself that I need to enjoy it even more than compared to what I've done before. Uh, enjoy that it might be the last time or yeah the second last time um so just try and enjoy it a little bit extra um but the the thing that makes it difficult to say is first of all that i don't know exactly when i retire i have a very good idea about it might be it could be at the world championships next year but we don't know what the schedule looks like for next year no we we only just been told which places will have which events so 500s 750s and 1000s but we don't know if malaysia open is going to be in november or september or april whenever yeah, yeah so that's why it's it's impossible really for me to say if i'll ever come back uh, what do you do to yeah. enjoy it a bit more then i mean are you a bit more present in the moment or yeah, is, I, isn't it just a cliche to say no, go I, out I, and enjoy it it's not when I'm on court uh, I talk about enjoying it more uh, I just do whatever <laughs> I did before as well on court it's more actually, <laughs> a lot of mistakes yeah I'm probably exactly doing playing <laughs> really like up and down all the time uh, there's no reason in changing that no, it's no. been working like shit for 15 <laughs> years so why not keep on yeah. doing it uh, no it's more like outside of court uh, I try not to uh, to I don't know if it sounds stupid, but like put the same pressure on performance. Uh, just I, I try to enjoy just being there, being able to live from playing badminton and having a lot of time to myself, not having to worry about stuff at home. And yeah, I just try to be a little bit more loose when I'm off court. I don't know if it makes sense in any yeah, way. It but does. It does definitely. Yeah, for me, definitely, it's not a cliche. I can uh, I can feel a difference in terms of that. Um, if it will give me better results, I don't know. It hasn't so far. No. It's been the same. <laughs> Maybe that's just my level, the level I play at. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. If if a more like loose approach to 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 living can mm. can do something good for your performance or not i don't know yeah. Yeah. i mean i maybe it could be a good short-term strategy mm. sometimes being a bit loose and like whatever mm. wh- what's going to happen is going to happen and then suddenly you can play really good mm. because you have less expectation yeah but i don't know if it's a good long long-term, long-term strategy no. i don't know no but i mean long term doesn't matter to you so no, i'm all about the short term if it, if it works short term <laughs> then it's uh, then it's good yeah. interesting um no definitely also look forward to go back to all those free countries get another shot at some point hopefully next year yeah but um i think that's it for today i think it uh, is, it is it you is. did great thank you very much for updating me on on the bampton world always my pleasure i have been uh i've been trying to avoid it as much as possible mm-hmm. uh, because it's been tough to watch and yeah. stuff yeah. so uh, thank you very much for you for need to get back at it yeah. we need yeah, you yeah, in yeah. top shape for the world championships <laughs> in japan <laughs> yeah i'll i'll try i'll try All right. thank you for keeping me me and the the bamson experience viewers updated and thank you guys for watching another episode of the bamson experience i hope that you enjoyed it even though we did not have a big superstar guest today it was just Myself and Hans Christian, I mean... And Oliver in the background. Oliver in the in the background. So, hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't done it, please hit that subscribe button. Ugh, I'm out of shape. I'm rusty. <laughs> I'm rusty in this outro thing. We should we should do that, the outro upstairs, right? Uh, we can kind of add that in after okay, the outro. Okay. So, stay tuned for the chair re- revelation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. Like the video. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about some of the things that we have been talking about in this episode of the Bandstand Experience. And see you, I don't know when, but next time. Next time, yeah. Bye, guys. Whoa! If you ever play hide and seek with your kid, then this would be like the perfect box. Yeah, you can bring it home if you want. I don't want. <laughs> <laughs>